Now we want to extend this to do square root. Okay? How the heck we're going to do that? I mean, really what we want to do is just say square root. Oops, I keep doing that. Square root. Let's get our friendly neighborhood symbol for square root here. Okay? Square root. And we really want to put square root right here. Okay? The square root function. That's really what I want to do. And like if I had cosine, I'd really want to put the cosine function here. Okay? Now, this is obviously not a double. That's not going to work. So this can't be a double. This has to be something else. Okay? It has to be something that would work for a double and would also work for a function. Okay? How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to implement a new type. Okay? And it's similar to class. It's called enum. Okay? I'm going to call this enum operation. And inside this enum, I'm going to have all the different kinds of operations I know how to do. Now, you're probably used to enum in other languages. What is an enum in most languages? It is a discrete set of values, right? An enum has to have discrete values. Same thing in Swift. It has a discrete value. So, for example, it might be a constant, or maybe it's a unary operation, or it might be a binary operation, or maybe it's equals, the equals sign, which is kind of a special operation, okay? So enums are the same. What's different about enums in Swift is that they're like classes in that they can have methods. Okay? So I can go down here and say func, you know, something, take some arguments, return something. I can do that down here. Okay? Enums are allowed to have um, methods. Now, they can't have any vars. Okay? Uh, they can have computed vars, but they can't have any storage vars because this is essentially their storage. Okay? The enum. The other thing about them is they cannot have inheritance. So you can't have a new enum that inherits from another uh, enum, which probably would be weird anyway, um, so that's not much of a restriction. Okay? The other thing about enums is they are passed by value, and I'm just going to postpone talking about that until I show you struct, which is another passed by value data structure, in a moment. Okay? So here's operation. That's great. So now I can change pi. Uh, that's an operation.constant. Okay? Comment that out for a second. This is also an operation a constant. Uh, this is an operation dot unary operation. Okay, and this is also an operation dot unary operation. Okay, cool. So we can now change this double to the type operation. Okay, and errors go away. These are all operations. It all works. Now, small problem here is that we've lost track of the actual constants and uh, functions. We've commented them out. They're not even involved here. So this obviously has not solved the problem. It's a step on the way to solving the problem, but it has not solved the problem. All right, the other thing is, obviously down here, looking up constants like this and making the accumulate, this doesn't work. This only works for constants, so we're not going to do that. So how do we look things up now for operations? Well, we're going to do a similar thing here. Okay, we're going to say let, we can if, if let operation equal operations subsymbol. Okay, but now this operation is going to be one of these. Okay, it's going to be one of these enums, right? If I click on it, you see, it's a calculator brain dot operation. Oh yeah, notice also I defined this enum inside this class. So its full name is calculator brain dot operation. You can nest these things. You can put even classes inside classes if you want, and they'll just, it's just a namespace thing, right? The names will be whatever, dot, whatever, dot, whatever. Okay? Um, so I've got the operation there. Now I'm going to switch on this operation, and I know that the cases can be constant, okay? And, we, and I'll just break on all these for now. So it could be a constant, uh, it could be a unary operation, it could be um, a binary operation. Uh, or it could be equals. Okay, and remember in switch I have to define every single option, but I don't need default here because there are only four possible things that an operation could be. So I've got a case for all of them in my switch. Question? Why is operation, are we not referring to the same operation um, as the enum in the, in the form operation method? Because it's not capitalized. Uh, yeah, this operation, yeah. not capitalized, makes it a local, we're making it a local variable here, yeah. And actually, that's a really good opportunity for me to talk about um, how you capitalize, okay? All types, you want to be capitalized, like 
calculator brain, dictionary, operation, string, double. Do you notice they all are capitalized? Operate, everything, okay, is capitalized. All local variables and vars, lowercase first letter, and then capital letter for all the subsequent um, words in there. So it's called camel case. You guys know, have heard of that before. Um, so that's how you want to do all your naming. If you don't do that, you're going to get in trouble with me, okay? So I know some people like to use lowercase for class names. Forget it. You can't do it in Swift. Just don't do it, okay? It'll be allowed, but you'll get in trouble, so don't do it, okay? Uh, well, you had a second question? Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, why are we using the dot for the constants? Are we referring to operation dot? Okay. So that's my confusion. Exactly. So why did I say dot constant here instead of just saying constant? And the answer is, yeah, really we're doing operation.constant, but Swift can infer that it must be operation because it knows this is an operation. Okay? Is that because it's within the operations dictionary? It's, between the, the, it's part of the enum for operation. You see, operation is not really, we're not inside the dictionary here. We pulled it already out of the dictionary. So how does it know, is it intelligent enough to distinguish even though you've included Okay, it knows that this lowercase operation is a, a capital operation okay. because I pulled it out of this dictionary right. and it knows that that dictionary has operations as its value. Okay. So when I pulled out its value, it knew it. Okay. There you go. All right, so this is all going good, except for again, we don't have the pi and the e and the square root and the cosine in here. So how are we going to get those things in there? And the answer is, you actually already know it, you've heard it before, associated values. Okay? Remember, optional has that associated value. All enums have associated value. In fact, optional is an enum. Okay? This is what optional looks like if you were to look at it. Enum, optional, case, none, that's the nil case, case, sum, with associated value, t, and then optional is generic type, just like dictionary, it has this generic type. So this T could be any type, and that's how optional works. Okay? So we can do the same thing down here. We could associate, for example, a double with constants. Okay? Because constants need a double, M under bar pi, we need that thing. Okay? And so we're doing the same thing that optional does, associating a value um, with our constants. So we have this constant double, then here when we declare the constant we have to provide the associated value which is m under bar pi. Okay, now we can get rid of our comment there. Same thing here, we can take this m under bar e and associate it with this constant. Oops. Okay, see how we're doing that association? Now how do we get this associated value out when we're looking at a constant down here? Right here, we switched on the operation. We know that this is a constant. Right, we looked it up in the operations dictionary, and we found that it's a constant. Let's say, like this one. How do we get it? You do that by right here saying, let associated, you know, constant value or whatever you want to call this. Is this is just a local variable? You can call it anything you want. Okay, that will make this local variable glom onto the associated value. Okay, and so now we can say accumulator equals the associated constant value. Okay, so that's why I said switch is really powerful. It does this kind of pattern matching to get these associated values out. So you do that with switch. Okay, now associated constant value is kind of yucky. I'm just going to call it value. Okay, I only called it that long thing just to show you it could be called anything and that it is the associated value, but you would probably call it value. Okay, you got that? All right, let's run and see if this works. It's only going to work for constants because that's the only one where we've done any associated values for yet. But here we go, this is still working. Pi works. Okay, square root not implemented yet. All right, so let's do square root. Okay, so square root, what would be the associated value of a unary operation? Don't be shy. What? A function, yes, it's a function, okay? So how do we make a function be associated value here? Well, the lucky thing is that in Swift, functions are types just like any other type, okay? There's no difference in Swift's mind between a function type and a double. 
Exactly the same. Can be used in all the same circumstances. Arguments to functions, associated values, local variables, anything can be of type a function. And not only that, it's not a generic function, it's a function with certain arguments and return values. And how do you declare such a type? How do you say that that's the type here? You just type it. So this is a function that takes a double and returns a double. Okay, that's the associated value of unary operation. It's a function. So here, when we want to associate a value, we have to put in here, just like we put a double here for this one, right? Here we have to put a function that takes a double and returns a double, like, oh, I don't know, square root. Okay? Or maybe cosine. Okay? Everybody got that? Now, same thing down here, we got to grab that associated value. So here I'm going to say let, and again I could say associated function, but I'm just going to call this function. Okay? Now I have, this is a local variable of type function that takes a double and returns a double. That's its type. Okay? That's the type of this function. In fact, watch. Alt click on it, look at its type. It's a function that takes a double and returns a double. How do I use a variable like that? Well, I use it just like a function. Accumulator equals function of accumulator. Oops, not accessor. Accumulator. Okay? Now, again, this is just a local variable. I could call this foo. And then I would put foo here. Okay? This is a local variable. That's all it is. And it happens to be, its type is a function that takes a double, returns a double. All right? Everybody cool with that? All right, let's run again, see if this is working. All right, so 81 square root, excellent. Okay, it's executing this associated value. It looked up that square root, found that it was a unary operation with this associated value, went down here and perform operation, found it here, grabbed that associated value, and then I used it to update my accumulator. Question. Well, the dictionary can only have an operation in it, right? It can only have one of these. And this only has four possible cases. Even though any given case might have any associated value, it's still the actual case of that operation. is only these four. So down here, when I switch on it, I only have to cover those four cases. No more. 